When you're on the road cheering on your favorite football team, you need a comfortable room to come back to. With nearly 2,000 hotel locations, Hampton has free hot breakfast and free Wi-Fi to help you keep up with your team. Book now at Hampton.com. And look who it is sitting in the Ed McMahon seat. Wow. How does it feel to sit there? It's pretty weird, isn't it? No power at all. <laughs> it's like being a, it's a caddy. It's not any fun at all. Now, I heard you complain yesterday about this talent meeting. That was awful. And, and the first thing I'd like to say is I don't like that word talent because it's like a caste system word. And it, and the people like us who were not invited, the implication is you have no talent. <laughs> right? So how did it go? And did you learn anything? No, it's meeting? just, you know, it's I can't control myself. I yell at management. It's fine. But, you know, it's mostly stuff that I'll never use on the air. And when you're doing a radio show by yourself, I'm just looking for content all right, day. Right. So I can't really say what happened in the meeting because it's private. <laughs> so there's no value to, barely at all at the meeting for me. So you're always looking for material, even in a corporate even meeting. Even at home. Yeah. That's what you're, yeah. Right, right. So uh, we have material a lot today. Wes Welker, do you believe his story? I mean, it seems like a crazy story to yeah, be well, here's advancing the thing. here. It, so it explodes last night on social media. And uh, I don't spend a lot of time on Twitter, but last night I was on reading a bunch of articles, longform.com. You ever gone there? I have. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So I'm reading stuff, and all of a sudden there's these Molly jokes and Molly, 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 and I don't know what that stuff is because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, a big drug user. I, I don't know what Molly. I didn't know until today what Molly was. So Wes Walker says I didn't use it. I don't know what it is. Whether he did or not, this is what's happened. Not only is it toppling governments, but stuff explodes on social media. And then you have to react to it. And I find myself thinking, what if I was Wes Welker and somebody innuendo, uh, innuendo at the Kentucky Derby? True or not? Let's mm. say I do believe him. You, you are helpless. You can literally be innocent, and it doesn't matter because nobody has to pay for Twitter. Anybody can be on it. You don't have to be accredited. So people were posting things last night. How do I know if it's true? Right. It was all based on innuendo. I generally try to believe athletes, although when it comes to PED use in any sport, history tells us they're lying. But I watched it explode last night on social media, and my first takeaway is it's out of control. Like, once a story breaks on social media, true or not, it's you're, out of you're control. You're done. Now, let me ask you this, because I think it's different in baseball, and I think fans in baseball care a lot more about PEDs than fans yes. in football. So I do think it's going to hurt him long term because his story was a great story, undrafted, five foot two. I'm kidding. But, but a guy who didn't have a ton of physical ability and made himself into one of the best players and receivers in the National Football League. Now, do you have to question everything that we thought was authentic about Wes Welker? Or do you think because it's football, ultimately people are going to forget about it? Yeah, well, baseball's based in tradition and history, and um, football's not. Football's based on win tomorrow. Right. So I don't think it will affect Wes Welker at all. I don't think less of him. I'd think more of him if he made that catch in the Super Bowl <laughs> and they beat the Giants. I don't. That was I, the biggest knock against him until today. Is he had a few drops. I don't think it works that way in the NFL. Um, I. It's almost like, have you ever watched, you know, you ever watched like the USA Today pageant? The culture in America now, like the one that Trump does, mm -hmm. when you watch him, don't you think everybody's had work? <laughs> I mean, you have to be beautiful to begin with, but everybody's sort of had work right. done. Yeah. I look at the yourself. NFL, and I think we all think everybody's got a little something in the protein shake. And since it doesn't really matter to me outside of fantasy football, and if you cover the spread or if I like my team, I don't care. But, I don't, but, but is it just that we care so much more in baseball? Is it simply because of the numbers, yes. the sacred numbers of Ruth yes. at 714, Aaron Listen, at 715? Today, and, in the New York Post, uh, Joel Sherman says, you got to move Derek Jeter down. Mm-hmm. And I went and read the response from the New Yorkers right. to his piece in the New York Post. And it was classic baseball. Well, considering he's having a better last year than Mickey Mantle and Babe Ruth and Stan Musial, would you ever in football say, you know, compared to Red Grange and Hugh McElhane, <laughs> baseball, it's history, it's tradition, it's it's founded in that. They struggled with they struggled with replay. So baseball is numbers based, comparatively as Jeter ends, you stack them up with all the shortstops. You don't necessarily do that with Wes Welker. You don't say, well, of all the slot receivers, right. I don't believe his 900 catches. He won games. He was really valuable. He played with Brady and Manning. I don't care if he took a smoothie with something in it. Yeah, and I, I contend that most fans don't know who has the most passing yards in, in NFL history. Is it, is it Favre? Is it Marino? Is it Elway? Is it somebody else? Or who has the most touchdowns? It's not really known. So that might help him a bit, but I do think he damaged himself here. And he's going to have to live with the consequences, maybe not as severe as a baseball player like a Ryan Braun 
had to deal with after his vehement denials turned out to be fraudulent. But let's talk about Michael Sam real quickly. And I think we differ on this. I, I think there's no way he's not one of the 2,000 best football players on the planet. And if you include practice squad guys, 320 of those guys, on top of the 1,690 on the 53-man rosters, he would be in the top 2,000. And, and so do you think he has no impact on the Cowboys? Do you think he never gets to the 46-man roster? What do you see from him going forward? Well, I think football is the ultimate meritocracy. Um, if you can win games, and in the NFL today it's get a quarterback, then there's two goals. Protect yours and get theirs. And he can, he, he's proven he well, can do that at a certain level. Well, it, certainly in high school and college and in preseason. Um, I think I've always rooted for him, and I think there's probably a spot in the league for just a niche or niche pass rusher. Um, it's a meritocracy. If, if the bottom line is if Drew Brees tomorrow was ineffective or Tom Brady, they'd get cut. I mean, Belichick would get rid of Brady tomorrow if he couldn't win games. Right. Look at what he's done with great players. Baseball's not that way. Even though we know Derek Jeter's no longer a two-hitter, it's understood there's a certain way to play baseball and a way to treat stars. You don't ask a power hitter to bunt, even if the situation calls for it. Baseball's not a meritocracy. Would you drop Jeter? Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you would, you'd you be embarrassing a guy in the last three weeks of his career. You know it's ending. It's not like, well, we think he's going to play next year. Again, I'm in a playoff race. I want to win games. Mm-hmm. That's the football culture. Mm-hmm. That's the hockey culture. Win a game, get into the playoffs. I'll say this. Um... When it comes to Michael Sam, I think the mistake that that a lot of, and I'm not saying you're making a mistake, but people are saying, well, he's one of the best so-and-so players in the National Football League. This league has never had the best players on all the rosters. There were probably nine to 12 guys cut because they're just a little too expensive. There were probably nine to 12 guys cut because they're close, but they're not great in the locker room. There was probably nine to 12 guys cut because they're a good corner, but the truth is... We don't need a corner. This has never been a league about, quote, the be- either is the NBA. Steve Kerr was not one of the best players. He could do one thing functionally at a high level at the end of his career. And, and he knew there were only five teams in the NBA where he would work, Absolutely. and he found those teams. Absolutely. Yeah. So is Michael Sam more talented than every punter, than <laughs> every center? Absolutely. The question becomes, can Michael Sam in a – won't do special teams. We found out he's not fast enough to go linebacker. He's not a great athlete. On the half of the teams in the league, 12 to 14, that play the defense, what he specializes in, can he elevate a team and make plays? I believe deep down he can. But, I, you know, I, I'm so tired of hearing this. The NFL is homophobic. Oh, wait, he got drafted. The NFL is not homophobic. They cut him. The NFL is homophobic. Oh, the Cowboys picked him up? Okay, the NFL is not homophobic. The NFL is a meritocracy. If he can make plays, he will make this league. I believe he'll make Dallas. Uh, Tony, I absolutely believe he will. Tony Dungy said differently. You know, he no, Tony about Dungy di- said. He, he said distractions. Absolutely. But you know what? To me, that's, that's a load of, you know what? Because okay. if you're saying that, you're saying that it's not just about football. It's, and he didn't create any distractions. But know? remember, it's not always just about football. T.O. is good enough to play. Headache. Ocho, the last year, there was one more well, year he, in Ocho. He created headaches well, constantly. Michael Sam Tim doesn't Tebow's create a, Tim, headaches. He's just well, a, he's no, a he, human being who happens to have a... Okay, but again, we're dealing in a very different culture. 22-year-old males, machismo. It's very similar to the military, which struggle with the same issue. It's not you and I. It's not media. It's not architecture. It's not Google. It's not Yahoo. It's like the military, who for a decade massively struggled with this. Because the military is mostly 22-year-old testosterone filled with weapons men. It's a different chamber. It's a different world. I think he'll make it. I'm rooting for him. I do think he adds value. And I do think he can do something specifically which is valuable in the league. But the most talented guys have never made this league. The New England Patriots are the most successful franchise in the last decade. Is Matt Slater good enough to make any other team? No! But he fills a role for Belichick. So it's not just that Michael Sam's talent. By the way, they drafted a guy in New England who was a rugby player at Ohio State. (laughs) They did. Well, They did because he fills a need. If Michael can fill a need and make plays, he'll be on. But the the whole best athletes make this league, that's never been the case. Well, 16 defensive ends were signed to practice squads before Michael Sam was signed by the Cowboys. I I have a hard time reconciling that, how that happened. But he's going to make the Cowboys. Yeah, I think he'll he'll have an impact on them because they need need him. Yes. So... Anyway, you're back tomorrow, and yeah. then you're on through the Super Bowl, right? You are not off again. 
Uh, basically, well, you, you, let's not go crazy. Guy can get whooping cough right. tomorrow because, you know, on Twitter, we have people demanding your return, getting me out of here. I, I realize I'm a practice squad quarterback, so I, I'm fine with that. I want you back, too. <laughs> it's like I'm holding you back here and and I totally understand my role in the universe. So, no, I always appreciate you being on our show. What do you got next? Uh, Kershaw MVP? Kershaw has oh, MVP. That's so that's much more thing. interesting. I got, a, I got a live read here, which is not <laughs> nearly as interesting as you. But thanks for helping us out. Thank you, America. Thank you. When you're on the road cheering on your favorite football team, you need a comfortable room and a clean, fresh bed to come back to. Hampton gets that. We have nearly 2,000 locations with free hot breakfast to fuel you up before the game and free Wi-Fi so you can stay connected and keep up with your team wherever your travels may take you. Hampton is all about the fans. Book now at Hampton.com and feel the Hamptonality.